All right, brand new Five Nights is out. It's time to jump on the hype and it's done. This video's for people that don't give a shit about the hype. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of That Cyber Channel. My name is Dan Cyber and Sister Location. That was a thing. Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location has come and gone in literally a weekend. Yet, some of you may still want some more Five Nights. So I thought I'd take a dive into the genre Scott created and talk about some FNAF fan games. Five Nights at Freddy's was released all the way back in August of 2014. The game nearly failed as Scott couldn't get any traction going. It wasn't until a few YouTubers, most notably Mr. Markiplier himself, found the game and launched it into the spotlight. Since then, FNAF has been a YouTube and horror staple, offering jump scares galore and literal fuck tons of theories for MatPat to lose his mind over. But that's not all it did. FNAF created an entire subgenre of games. Shortly after the first game, many developers tried their hand at replicating the simple gameplay. Thus began the FNAF horror genre. Currently, by searching for FNAF fan games, you get 9,000 plus results. Shit. What have I done? I searched through nearly 100 different FNAF fan games to find the most notable ones. So without further ado, let's jump into this beast. Shit. Frickin' A, there's so many of these games, where do I even start? Well, I think let's start closest to the franchise. A lot of the games I've found extended the FNAF universe, and along with it, created some unofficial storylines. So best I start there with one of the most respected FNAF fan games, Five Nights at Candy's. Five Nights at Candy's puts you in the shoes of a security guard. Shocker, right? And if you're hoping for no nightly phone calls, you're out of luck. We got another phone guy. Through his phone calls, we're able to determine that this takes place most likely after FNAF 2. He informs us that a Freddy's Fazbear Pizzeria closed down recently, and that the animatronics in this place also move around at night. Yeah, spoopy robots, I get it. Look, I've heard it enough times and have been jump scared just as much. Ah, what? Shit! Oh, oh god! I got this. Gameplay-wise, it's very similar to FNAF 1, but a few welcome variants. You have doors on the left and right, but also a window in front of you that'll need to be closed. You also have your usual cameras. However, the cameras need to be double-clicked to turn on the night vision so you can see the animatronics coming. Other than that, the game is simple. Keep track of the animatronics, close the doors accordingly. Five Nights at Candy's has short cinematic scenes similar to FNAF 2 between each night. These two feature the puppet beginning to mess with the animatronics. And <laughs> boy, does he look upset. But my favorite is after night three. Look at him. Hey there, buddy. You doing all right? Looks like he's been doing a lot of the drugs. Moving on, we're jumping into another post FNAF game with Those Nights at Rachel's. Let me start off by saying that damn. This game looks good. You can tell the developer really knows how to build atmosphere. This particular game was built with the Unreal 4 engine, and because of that, the models, lighting, and basically everything looks excellent. This takes place at another restaurant called Doug and Rachel's, and with a new place comes a new phone guy. Uh, hello? Hello, hello? This guy, however, can act, and his performance is great. Seems as though the owner has disappeared, and the phone guy and a colleague have been messing around with Freddy's Pizzeria. Unlike many of the games we're talking about in this video, this game will actually have you spinning around to face different monitors and hallways. And if it looks like a lot, it is. I can only imagine what this looks like from a third person perspective. Girl. It does lead to one of my biggest issues with the game, however. While it can be seen as a great way to challenge the player, this monitor is almost completely pointless, and having to hit E to lean and E to return is very counterintuitive. That being said, I like the mechanic of having to run to a back room to stop an animatronic. All in all, it's a cool story and definitely worth checking out. 
The developer is also currently working on another game called The Joy of Creation Reborn. It features free roaming gameplay, which is awesome as well as a story mode demo. I would go into more detail, but the game is still in beta and has some kinks it needs to work out. If you want to see me playing the game, then head over to Game Tavern where my buddy Mark and I got scared out of our mind. <laughs> Let's leave the FNAF Extended Universe and jump into the wonderful world of crossovers. When something becomes popular, you can bet your sweet animatronic ass that the fandoms will create their own versions. And FNAF is no exception. Let's jump into FNAF Fan Fan Games. I don't have a better term for it, I just like the way that Fan Fan sounds. Our first stop is at Wario's, where you'll be guarding a f factory. Because Wario's hard hat or his bike? Why am I trying to put logic into this? This game has the same mechanics of the original FNAF game, with a window and a door you must block off. But that's not all. You'll also be having to defend yourself from Mario by using your monitor as a shield, similar to Golden Freddy. When it comes down to it, Five Nights at Wario's can best be described as a Google image search or Photoshop. All the backgrounds are stock photos and cutouts of the characters pieced together. Some are good, but others can be a little distorted, such as the office you'll be spending most of your time in. Look, man, if you need some images, I got some. Here's a wonderful picture of my office. Notice the subtle lighting on the worn out chair saying, my butt has sat there many times. Next is a dumpster. Every place needs a dumpster, and I think Wario would love to pop out of it. And here's a picture of a bathroom. I poop here. In all seriousness though, the gameplay in this is fairly solid, if a bit easy. Plus you got to give credit to the fact that they put together a bit of a story. Though the jump scares, <laughs> meh, like a four. Ah, where there are games, Sonic unapologetically shows his face in it. Ooh, and this one's got Mario. Five Nights at Sonic's, well, yeah, it's an adventure. I'm about 90% sure the graphics in this were done in MS Paint. 95% sure. At first glance, it seems easy to rip into this, but this is definitely a young developer making one of his first games. So let's approach it like that, cause I'm not gonna be the guy in his late 20s ripping into someone who's probably still in middle school or high school. The story for this is nothing too complicated. Someone opens a pizzeria and was hoping to get the heroes to perform, but they had all their normal lives and stuff, so they couldn't do that. I mean, that, that, that's a fair enough excuse. I think it's fair to assume that saving the world on a daily basis is a uh, full-time gig. So they made clones and they can, quote, get a bit evil during the night. Not a great selling point for this place. The game then plays just like the rest of them. Two doors, camera, lights. One critique though, the freaking doors take all the power. We talked about video game characters. How about some TV shows? Let's start with one of my favorites, Gravity Falls and Five Nights in Madness. This one will have you keeping Bill Cipher himself at bay. I'm pumped. Let's... What? Where, where the fuck did he go? What? Okay, all right, well, let's do it again. Let's do it again. Okay, all right, there he is. And he's gone. And what the fuck? Okay, one more time. Okay, I got this. All right, there he is. There he is. There he is. Your motherfucker! Fuck it. You can keep track of him for maybe about a minute before you lose him in the graphical vomit that is the rooms. I mean, if it's the goal to make me feel like I've gone mad, well then congratulations. I'm freaking cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. Not a sponsor, I just like the chocolatey goodness. All right, so the last one left a bad taste in my mouth. Seems like every fan fan game just doesn't seem to have the polish I'd like to see. Let's see what's next on the list. Oh no. If Gravity Falls was a mess, then Five Nights at the Chum Bucket's gonna be worse. Never mind! So this is Five Nights at the Chum Bucket. It's a sequel to Five Nights at the Krusty Krab, but I couldn't get the game to run properly for some reason. So we're jumping to the sequel. This is the most polished fan fan game out of everything I've seen. The entire game is built from the ground up in the Unreal 4 engine. Everything about this game is beautifully designed and is honestly terrifying compared to what I've seen. You play a hostage who has been taken to the chum bucket and your captor has sent SpongeBob and his animatronic friends after you. And also sent them to the gym cause SpongeBob is freaking yoked bruh. 
In this game, you'll have infinite power, but you can only have two things active at a time, such as a door and the security cameras. Oh yeah, by the way, you'll have to keep track of the animatronics through four floors and tons of cameras. This game is easily the best in the category. It runs well, it's challenging, and it actually plays into the horror genre, oh my god! What happened to F is for friends who do stuff together? You know, usually these kind of games can get a bit weird, but they were actually fairly tame. Not these next ones. Some people took the gameplay characters and setting to whole new levels of weird. Because the internet is a scary, scary place. So join me now while we dive into the weirder side of FNAF. Have you ever wanted to find love with a performer? Ever dream about dating robots? Think Chica is a hot piece of bird ass? Well, apparently the internet thinks so too, and now with their help, you can date Freddy and his friends. Five Nights at Love is our next game. We'll be playing version 2.1, which added Chica, Mangle, Bonnie, and secrets. You play as the security guard for Freddy's, but rather than avoid being killed, you wander around and talk to the animatronics. When you run into an animatronic, you can talk to them or give them gifts to win their affection. The gifts can be found with Balloon Boy, who is... With BB, you'll be able to gamble for power, money, and gifts with money you find sweeping the office floor. Oh, and a word of warning, always say yes to the balloons. Much like other dating sims, this game is all about the characters. Each one has a very distinct personality and interactions that are fun to have. Personal favorite is Super Cute Springtrap. I regret nothing. How about we leave the world of romance and get into some debauchery? Five Nights at Fuckboys promises to be, um, a thing. Let's just get it started and... Is this? Is this a freaking RPG? Oh shit. Let's do this. That's right. Five Nights at Fuckboys is a turn-based RPG made an RPG maker, and it's addicting as fuck. I booted up the game and accidentally stayed up till 4 a.m. beating it 100%. You play as Freddy and you're out to have a night of debauchery, but first, you must shit on all the cameras. Wait. To do this, you'll need to recruit Freddy's friends. Bonnie needs his head back. Chica is locked in the kitchen, and by freeing her, you get the wonderful request to devour my hot bird ass Freddy. And then you'll need to burn down Pirate's Cove to stop Foxy from can the pirate masturbate in this fucking house with his hook? Once you have your team, you'll be grinding a lot for tokens, XP, and ultimate weapons to take out the cameras. That's my biggest issue with the game is the grind. You'll need the best equipment to beat the game, and especially if you want to beat the optional bosses. Oh yeah, this game has tons of secrets! Such as hitting this door dozens of times to unlock the ultimate of ultimate weapons. I'm used to it now. This game is probably one of the most quoted games in the FNAF fanbase, including fan favorites like Inhale my dong enragement child. Everything about this game is wrong, and that's part of the... charm? It's a fun RPG that you can beat in about four to five hours. And I can actually say, I recommend it. That was fucking stupid. Now it's time to head back into the traditional game style for perhaps one of my favorite games to come from this trend, One Night at Flumpty's. And yes, that is an egg because Humpty Dumpty, Flumpty, get, if you, if you don't get it, go read a freaking book. So let's check out The Office, shall we? Oh look, Ronald McDonald, a dog, the Kongs, Pooh, Split in half? Dr. Mario's head? I've made a huge mistake. This game is a bit misleading. While being bright and whimsical, it's also incredibly unnerving. Nothing is as it seems, especially with Flumpty who starts off telling you, I'm an egg. I'm immune to the plot and I can transcend time and space. Also, I'm coming after you. You can figure out the rest. Have fun. <laughs> so yeah, that's happening. The game plays very similar to FNAF 1, with doors you must close, but a few extra nightmares in store. Flumpty and birthday boy Blam are your Bonnie and Chica, the beaver is your Foxy, and this? This monstrosity is Freddy. You'll be stopping him with your door just like the others, 
But the major problem is this. Clown! If you know me, you'll know that I have a distinct fear of clowns and this shit right here is not helping. This guy will approach every time you use your cameras after 4 a.m. Meaning you'll need to use them sparingly and as long as you can. This is easily the best designed and my favorite FNAF type game out there. There's a sequel as well and it shakes things up even more. I cannot recommend these games enough. All right, I think that covers just about everything on my list. Oh, Five Nights at Anime. Oh cool, I just started getting back into it. I wonder what this one's about. Thank you everyone for watching. If you enjoy what I do and like to see more, consider becoming a patron. It helps support the channel and get more videos out to you faster. And if you're a fan of Doom, why not subscribe and check out my Doom videos? I'm working hard on the Doom 2016 review now and it will be coming out soon. Don't forget to like the video and share it on the social medias. And until next time, Cybered out.